back with us, NBC News national political correspondent Steve Kornacki. And joining us is NBC News senior political editor and poll expert Mark Murray. So, Steve, first to you at the big board. Walk us through these new numbers on the Republican side and the potential matchups. Yeah, Andrew, you mentioned it. Just in terms of the Republican race itself, here's our new numbers. Nationally, Trump now nearly at 60 percent among Republicans. Ron DeSantis, his nearest and use the term nearest advisedly, their rival, 43 points behind him at just 16 percent. Everybody else back in single digits. You mentioned this comes after Trump missed, uh, skipped the first debate on the verge of skipping the second debate, several uh, indictments uh, of criminal allegations against him, all things that his opponents, his Republican rivals, thought would cause Republican voters to reconsider their interest in a Trump candidacy. Instead, his numbers have just moved up and up. In fact, if you went back to the start of this spring when we polled this race, Trump's lead over Ron DeSantis at that point was just 15 points. It's exploded now to 43. It's basically tripled Trump's advantage over DeSantis from April until now. And again, with nobody else there popping into double digits. So Trump nearly at 60 percent here. If it is indeed what Republicans end up going with, Trump for a rematch against Biden, how would that look in our poll? We've got a tie. We've got Biden at 46 Trump at 46. We also tested a couple of other possibilities here. Here's an interesting one. Ron DeSantis. And again, sort of the uh, unspoken premise of the DeSantis campaign was to offer Republicans an electable, a more electable version of Donald Trump. And yet, in a head-to-head -head against Joe Biden, DeSantis is actually doing a point worse in our poll than Trump does. And we tested a third candidate, too, former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. She leads Biden 46 to 41 in this poll, although one one note here, key, I think, on that Haley number, we also found that just under half of all voters know who she is and have an opinion of her. So she's unknown by a lot of voters. And it may be that some of that advantage for her over Biden, because she's so unknown, some of those voters may view her that name more as a generic Republican alternative to Biden. And that may be boosting her. So let's see as she gets more attention, more attacks, more scrutiny, uh, how those numbers look. But an interesting finding there, potentially. And Steve, what are the top voter concerns? Uh, first about Biden, Joe Biden, and then Donald Trump. Yeah, so when you just take a look at Biden here, I mean, the economy stands out. When he took office, basically the country was split in half on whether they were satisfied or dissatisfied with where the economy was now. Look at that number, 28 percent, barely one in four voters say they're satisfied with where the economy is. When you're the incumbent president, that's an obvious vulnerability for you. And then just we stack these four things uh, together and ask folks, are these major or moderate concerns for you? And I thought this was interesting because Trump's indictments, all of his legal issues, the pending trials, this is a significant concern to a clear majority of Americans. 62 percent say it's a major or moderate concern to them. But Look at this number that's even higher, 74 percent saying that Joe Biden's age and his fitness are major or moderate concerns to them as they consider the election. That number 12 points higher. And also notably, uh, Joe Biden is 80 years old. Donald Trump turned 77 this summer. Not a lot of t uh, years between them there. And yet on the age question, only 47 percent say that uh, Trump's age and fitness concern them. And that's one of the most striking numbers, Mark Murray, in this poll. First of all, that the president only has a 41 percent approval rating. He's been bumping around down in the low 40s. In one poll, he went down to 39. That mm -hmm. was sort of an outlier. But now he's got this incredibly large number of people, 74 percent, concerned about his age and fitness, while only 47 percent are concerned about Donald Trump's, who is arguably, you know, you know, questionable in terms of the way he speaks when he's ad-libbing, when he's off-prompter also. Yeah, this is a really rough poll for the president, as well as for Donald Trump. But as one of our pollsters, Bill McInturf, the Republican half of the NBC News poll, said this is a flashing, glaring red light for the incumbent in the White House. The one silver lining here, though, in the poll, if you are Joe Biden in the White House, is that among the 74 percent who say that I have worries about Joe Biden's age and mental fitness, 
18% say, I'm still going to vote for him anyway over Donald Trump. It's a much smaller share for the people who have concerns about Donald Trump's multiple uh, trials and who would say that they would still vote for him despite that. And so when we look at our poll and under the hood of people uh, disapprove of, you know, uh, Latinos, African-Americans, young people who all say that they're going to disapprove of Joe Biden's job performance, there is still a sizable number who say, I disapprove of his job, but I'll still vote for him over Donald Trump. And that's significant. And that's why this race is tied, Andrea. But there's still an enthusiasm, a real enthusiasm gap among the young voters, among the black and Latino voters who have been so important to his victory last time. Yeah, this might be the roughest of all the numbers for, for President Biden in the White House in our poll. It not only shows Republicans with an enthusiasm voting high voter interest uh, over Democrats, but it also shows that African-Americans, Latinos, and then particularly young people aren't as fired up as they were in past election cycles at this same point in time in the 2020 race, in 2016, in 2012, in 2008. So 13 months ago, still a long time, but they have some work to do, Andrea. One quick question. I heard Chris Christie saying to Kristen Welker about the negative you know, support for all of the challengers to Donald Trump. Uh, this is a national poll, and it's the states and the primaries and the caucuses that matter. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. As we've often seen, if you end up winning Iowa, you win New Hampshire, you can change the national numbers. But don't forget that national polls do give us a broad taste of where the American electorate is right now, more than just like, what does Iowa and New Hampshire end up saying? We need to actually see how the general populace, and also, don't forget that actually contests like we have on Super Tuesday, rather big primary days, get beyond Iowa and New Hampshire. So I think there's a nice balance between national polls like ours and also Iowa and New Hampshire polls. And we're going to have a lot more on that in the coming months.